Hello everyone. So this video is going to cover the law of iterated expectations or the law of total expectations, also sometimes called the Tower Rule or Adam's Law. Um, this is going to be a precursor for proving the Bellman equations, where we try to establish a recursive relationship between the value function of the current state and the value function of the next state. So we will start off uh, by the original form of LIE and the original form basically uh, states that the expectation of a random variable x uh, can be re represented as the expectation over the different possible values of y of the expectation of the random variable x given uh, the random variable y. So uh, this basically is trying to say that if you have a random variable x then the expected value of this particular random variable x can be calculated if you know the conditional expectation of this particular random variable with respect to some other random variable y. So if you are calculating the weighted average of this um, expectation inside for all the possible values of y, then that will basically give you the expected value of the random variable x. So now in order to understand this uh, better, we can um, take an example. And this example um, will be of a class and we concern ourselves with a class uh, where we want to basically find out the expected score of the class in a particular test All right however this quantity is of course not known to us directly and we want to calculate that what do we do know however is that this class can be divided into two sections which are exhaustive in nature so we have um, either males or we have females in the class right and what we also know is that uh, the expected uh, score of any person given that the person of uh, is a female is known and the expected score of a person given that the person is a male is also known to us right and we also know uh, what is the ratio of the males and females in the class right so we know the probability that a person chosen is a male uh, or a female and so now we want to use this information to calculate the expected score of the entire class. So for any person, regardless that uh, the person is a male or a female. So just like the law of total probability, you can see that we can somehow calculate um, the weighted average of uh, these two probabilities over here. And uh, we will weight them depending on the ratio that the males and the females appear in the class. So this... Um, this uh, expected score given that a person is male times the ratio um, of choosing a male um, plus the expected score given that a person is a female times the ratio of choosing a female basically. So th that is why the total expected score is going to turn as the expected score given that the chosen person is a male times the probability that the chosen person is a male plus expected score given that the person is a female uh, times the ratio of females in the population. So now what we can do is we can now extend to uh, the mathematical proof and this mathematical proof will help us in understanding how this happens. And so what we can do is we can again take uh, the RHS of the expression and the RHS was basically the expected value of the expected value of the random variable x given y. So just to note again that this outer expectation is for the different possible values of y. So it concerns itself with y, right? And so we can expand this as summation over the different values of y. Uh, the expected value of x given that now we have conditioned it to some value of capital Y equal to small y times the probability that the random variable y takes the value of small y right now what we can do is we can uh, further open up the expectation inside this expression and that will basically be summation over all the x's x multiplied by the probability that your random variable x takes the value of small x given that you have conditioned it to y being equal to small y times the probability that y is equal to small y okay 
now uh, what we can see is that this particular probability term is a condition probability term right and we can break this down um, with the help of a joint pdf right so this will become summation over y summation over x x times probability that the random variable x is equal to small x and y is equal to y divided by a probability y equals y times probability y is equal to y so basically uh, these two terms cancel out each other and what you are left with finally is summation over y summation over x x times probability x is equal to x y is equal to y and this now can be uh, rewritten as so if you basically change the order of summation what you can see is that summation over x you write x and then summation over y probability x is equal to x and y is equal to y now what you can see over here is that this is basically a marginal probability and what you can do is you can use the concept of marginal probability over here and you will be able to rewrite this as summation over x x times probability that capital x take the takes the value small x because now you have exhausted all the y's so now this will be the expected value of the random variable x which is equal to our lhs so like this is the formal proof and this was the example where you are basically dividing your entire population to um, say two sections and for each section you know what is the expected value of that particular random variable which in our case is the score given that you choose a person from that subsection and times the probability that you are choosing a person from that subsection so now once we have done this we can now um, proceed on to the more complicated case which is basically the nested form and the nested form states that uh, the expected value of the random variable x given the random variable y is basically equal to the expected value of the expected value of x given the random variable y and z conditioned on the random variable y now just a couple of things over here first of all again this outer expectation is with respect to the the new random variable introduced which is z right so we are basically calculating this inner um, expectation term and this inner um, this term with respect to all the different values of z the next thing to note is that um, in the previous case in the original form um, we had the expectation of x now expectation of x is always going to be a scalar quantity it is going to be a real number because x is a random variable right and over here what you can observe is that in the nested form this is the expectation of the random variable x given the random variable y now since the this random variable y has not taken any specific value small y therefore this expectation of x given y is also a random variable and what you can say is that this uh, this expectation of x given y is also a random variable z which depends on the value of the random variable y so whatever value this capital y will take this expectation of x given y will have a different value for that right so we cannot um, mathematically prove it um, if it is a random variable so what we will do is we will convert it into a scalar by assuming that this capital y takes some real value small y but for now let's try to um, understand this with an example and we will use the same example over here but now we actually want to calculate the expected score of just the females right so we have the females over here and what i want to do is that for this example i want to calculate the expected score in the test given that the person is a female and this information is of course not given to me directly what i do know however is that this particular um, 
the uh, population can be divided into two parts and the first part is the females who go to tuition and the second part is the females who don't go to tuition right so now we are given these two sections and we um, also somehow know the expected score of um, a person given that the person is a female and the person goes to tuition and we also know the expected score of uh, the people of, of a person given that the person is a female and the person does not go to tuition and we want to use this information and of course we also have um, the probability uh, that the person is a female given that uh, sorry the person goes to tuition given that the person is a female and the person does not go to tuition given that the person is a female and so what we will now see is that the expectation of the score given the random variable um, gender equal to female is basically equal to what is the expected score of a person given that the person is a female and it goes and um, the person goes to tuition multiplied by the probability that the person goes to tuition given that the person is a female now this is basically the part where we differ from the first example in the first example we only had probability of the person being a female but here we have a condition probability and that is because we already have established the fact that the person is a female and now we have introduced another variable in this um, in this scenario where the person might be going to tuition or not so that is why the probability of going to tuition is conditioned on the fact that the person is already a female okay so now uh, this uh, plus the expected uh, uh, score of a person given that the person is a female and the person does not go to tuition times the probability that the person will not go to tuition given that the person is a female so this is basically um, the expression over here so now we will try to again um, prove this mathematically and we will again uh, take the RHS over here and the RHS is basically expectation over the different values of Z basically of the expected value of the random variable X conditioned on Y and Z and this expectation is evaluated given the condition that we already have fixed the random variable y and just as a reminder we need to convert this into a real number right now if we were to write this this is basically in itself a random variable so to fix it uh, we will have to make it equal to some real number y and now this is a uh, scalar quantity so this can be opened up uh, to be equal to summation over all the values of z expectation of x given now since you have conditioned this already on y being equal to small y so you will have small y over here and z is equal to small z this is multiplied by the probability that your z takes the value small z and again you have conditioned this on the fact that y has taken the value y already and you can see that this um, this term that we have just written over here is quite similar uh, to our example where we have basically calculated the expectation by multiplying it with the conditional probability so now we can further expand uh, the inner expectation and this will be summation over z summation over all the values of x x multiplied by the probability of capital x being equal to some small x given that your capital y is equal to some small y and your z is equal to some small z multiplied by z is equal to z and y is equal to y now again we can use uh, the fact that this is a conditional probability density function and we can rewrite this with the help of joint pdf so this will be probability x being equal to x y being equal to y and z being equal to z divided by probability y being equal to y 
and z being equal to z this is multiplied by probability z is equal to small z and y is equal to y divided by probability that y is equal to small y now these two terms will again cancel out each other and what you will be left with over here is now summation over all the z summation over all the x's x multiplied by probability so i'll just use this uh, shorthand notation x y and z divided by probability y and now what you can do is again you can manipulate um, the positions of the summation so summation over all the x's x times summation over all the z probability x comma y comma z times one by probability y now uh, just note that this term does not depend on z so what we can see that again over here uh, we have the marginal pr probability and so we can rewrite this as summation over all the x's x into probability x is equal to small x and y is equal to small y divided by probability that y is equal to y and this as you can see right now is going to get converted into conditional probability so summation over all the x's x into probability that your x takes the value small x given that y has taken the value y and so this is nothing but uh, the expected value of the random variable capital x given that your y has taken the value small y so by this we have proven the original as well as the nested form of the law of total expectations and this is going to help us in proving the bellman equations in the next video